the biopsychosocial model of health and disease. Tell me what you mean by that. Yeah, it's a beautiful framework that was introduced in the late 70s and early 80s by Dr. Engel. And, you know, it's a, it's a way of thinking in terms of systems. So uh, in the medical model, there's an emphasis on uh, uh, biology, right? The sort of biomedical reductionistic model. And I think a lot of people are aware that that lacks a lot of really important context in that just looking at things in a purely biological context is very much uh, missing the larger and important picture. So introducing uh, the psychosocial components includes you know, the psychology of health, right? The way people experience meeting with their provider, uh, the way people think about themselves in the context of society. And of course, there's a whole field of health psychology um, you know, especially with the, with the context of eating, we think about the experience of weight stigma, the experience of dieting or restrained eating. And then in public health, what we do is put everything into social context. So this is when you consider environmental factors. So if you were to take a, um, a condition uh, such as, uh, you know, trauma, you would start to think about the biological embedding of adversity. So the specific pathways in which childhood adversity can alter one's physiology. You would start to think about the psychological impact, the way someone ascribes meaning, the subjective experience, the way someone made sense out of that, um, the different thought processes that emerge through the trauma. And then you put it into social context and think about how it can impact relational health, how it can uh, affect someone's ability to form uh, social ties and be a part of a community. And so, you know, the biopsychosocial model is truly a multidisciplinary effort to merge uh, these different uh, academic disciplines that are often siloed and bring them all together and, and, and use, you know, larger conceptual frameworks. And, you know, it's, it's been utilized in psychiatry and in mental health and certainly in academic disciplines like public health and sometimes in uh, epidemiology, et cetera. And it's a just a powerful way of thinking about things more broadly and not being uh, limited to one particular point of view. If you think about, you know, you know, microbiologists or molecular scientists, they're seeing the world through the lens of mechanisms. And then we have psychologists who think about uh, the mind rather than the brain and then sociologists. And like, what if everyone could get together and start thinking about these things uh, systematically? I think we'd make a lot of progress with conditions like eating disorders, addictions, um, the experience of living in a larger body and so many more conditions. So it really is about collaborative efforts to understand health. 